Good afternoon. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you as a group here uh, this afternoon. Uh, my name's Andrew Cowell and uh, I'm with the company MWH. And I'm here speaking on behalf of BIM for Water. I'm part of the BIM for Water steering group. Uh, we have a group of about uh, uh, six or eight people who are directing BIM for the water industry. So the water industry context, uh, the water industry is just about to embark on AMP6, which is the asset investment uh, uh, program cycle in the next five years. And it's focused on customer service, efficiency, totex, collaboration and innovation. And all of that is really directed at the top one, which is customer service. So BIM is new for AMP6 in the water industry. In AMP5, the water industry has put in some good pilot projects around asset creation, uh, but we haven't really moved it into the long term. So AMP6 is an opportunity to connect asset creation with the long term operations. BIM addresses a number of water industry uh, issues. Capital delivery, we need to get efficient there. We need to connect capital delivery with operations, and we need to collaborate in order to do that. And then the water industry is very concerned about security and data security. So those PAS 1192 documents embrace that. The essential components of, of BIM are, are captured for me in this diagram which comes out of uh, PAS 1192, which shows the bottom third of the diagram related to projects and capital delivery, and the top third of the diagram, top two thirds of the diagram, focused on the owner operator. And uh, the owner operator, has a big responsibility in terms of setting out the organisational information requirements and uh, that required to drive the asset models. And really, the project information model needs to have information which connects back into that long-term owner operator. So a very important thing in the water sector that we're focusing on is getting established the employer's information requirements which actually links those two halves of that diagram or the top third uh, top two thirds with the bottom third that then also brings in the supply community which as you can see feeds into the project information model so the water industry uh, along with many other infrastructure sectors um, has huge opportunities out of bim because we all have digital skeletons in the cupboard um, we have lived in the last two or three decades where we've moved from the paper age to the digital age uh, and there are a lot of skeletons around the digital data. So the opportunities for BIM in the water industry are around improved information management, avoiding the duplication that we're seeing, improving the workflow and the data management that we've got, removing the data uh, silos, often driven from functional and contractual segregation. So one of the things that we're doing in BIM for Water is raising the awareness and the opportunity of BIM. So we've identified four task groups that are working on this. One is the BIM case study group, making the case for BIM. The other one is the, uh, the, the case studies, one's the business case. Standard libraries group, looking at standard products. And the fourth one is communication and guidance. So in terms of the business case, the water and sewerage companies have a lot of opportunity to get value out of BIM to achieve their business targets, to improve their asset management, to link their asset creation with operations, and above all, connect those to deliver better customer service. There also needs to be a business case for the supply community as well, because the supply community quite often sees it's bearing the cost and the value is with the water and sewerage companies. So we're working with the tier ones, tier twos, right through to the product suppliers to see where the value is for BIM right across uh, the sector. We've got a number of business cases that we're able to pull in from. Uh, there are some capital delivery efficiency business cases. There are a number of examples where standard products have been used. Uh, we've used BIM models to improve our off-site manufacturing and also mobile access to data. But one of the things we're trying to avoid is BIM shopping, where we just pick off the good things. So the case studies, we're looking to pick out good practice and turn things into business as usual. There's good work on changing the workflows, which uh, Thames Water are doing through 820. Anglian Water have done some great work on standard products. Seven Trent are doing some work on a big scheme, frankly. And uh, then there's United Utilities, again, with workflow. We're also working on standard libraries. Um, the supply community is getting engaged through British Water. 
We're working with BIM for manufacturing and manufacture, and we're looking at the SIBC product template for uh, producing graphical and non-graphical information. So having worked on those other three groups, then the key thing is how we communicate that and how we provide guidance. So we're looking at producing frequently asked question sheets to give some information to different stakeholders. And we want to promote the outcome from the different groups that we've uh, got working. Uh, we believe there's a lot of potential, but we can only get it out there if we communicate. So we need good industry collaboration in order to get the benefit out of BIM. So BIM for Water is collaborating with British Water. We need to pull in other industry bodies into that collaboration so that we get some united views. And we want owner operators to really step up and take the lead. So where can the industry collaborate? We need to work out where we can standardise across the sector and we need to work out where the value is in BIM and also where the costs are. And I believe that that actually is going to change the commercial models that we have. We have to work out what commercial models will drive BIM. So we have a conference taking place, um, British Water, which BIM for Water are taking part in uh, at Aston Villa Football Club on the 14th of April, where we're looking at BIM today, ALIM, Asset Lifecycle Management tomorrow, and how that can deliver a Totex future looking at total expenditure. BIM has a big part to play in that. Delivering that Totex future, as I say, BIM has a big part to play in it. We need to appreciate the value of good data. We need to value collaboration and we need to direct all that at delivering long-term customer service. So BIM can support that change that we need through the water sector to deliver that Totex future. Thank you very much.